This illusion is called Trove, the Seeker's Move. This painting was the last of three I did in one day. If you watched my previous two videos, you'll have seen Sanctum and Grow, Don't Change. I switched the publishing order for those two because I love Grow, Don't Change so much. So much. If you like this video, please consider checking those out, leaving a like, or commenting something. I'd really appreciate it. This is the 16th painting of my 20 page 9x12 canvas pad, so stay tuned for the remaining four to come. This concept came about on a page in my sketchbook with a very similar figure. I chose this one because I like the aloofness of it, while the pose maintains an elegance, a poise. I think it conveys a sense of wonder or curiosity and self-exploration. The face is turned away from the viewer. The elongated neck exaggerates the detachment the figure feels from its body. The legs create a crouch, while the torso itself is relaxed and reclined. Of the three I did this day, this one I worked on the fastest, yet it's so clean when you look at it. It really just took over an hour, like just a little bit over an hour. The others took 90 minutes for some reason. I don't know why I worked so slow on those. Maybe I just wasn't, my energy didn't align with them right. You'll see it in the end. This has a lovely, lovely, lovely luminous glow. It really makes it look like it's alive. Or just glowing from the inside. Which, I didn't even start with yellow. It's not backlit, so it's just like, wow, that's really nice. I, I've, I've consumed a lot of art content lately. And it occurred to me that I do consume art in a different way. Partly because I'm analytical. Another, because I make art too, you know? And I, it was the Money Ruined Art video that I watched on, I can't remember the YouTube channel's name. That's what brought it really to my awareness. But I was like, this type of video could probably only be made by somebody who likes and cares about art to realize that money ruined art. Because I sort of thought something very similar before. I am a self-taught artist, and so I've never really emulated earlier artists, at least not any prolific ones. Everyone, I think, has a cartoon stage, but I think mine was very brief. My methods, as I evaluate them, might be unconventional in that I paint from the tube more than from the palette because I work at random, erratic, and often by mood. I like to think that technique is to the artist as personality is to the person. A fingerprint. You get what I'm saying? I think being taught in part to my view of schools as prison where they are meant to force the individuality out of you by conditioning you to conform with positive reinforcement, that an artist is unlikely to flourish. My interest in artists and their art, at least the ones before me, like Basquiat, the way that he said to have worked and integrated so many things, whether it be like other artists' sort of motifs or other artists' techniques, whether it was sort of like homage things. It's just so perplexing, because I'm like, I can't imagine that, the headspace that you would be in to just be constantly pulling from so many things all the time, although I am in my own way, but for him, it's just like, it's such a wide, wide scope. It would probably have required a lot of patience, but when you look at his work, you don't really see patience, you know? There's a boldness, there's a brutality, very noisy chaotic. Francis Bacon, his technique as well, for his popular works especially, very, very interesting to me. To a lesser extent, I will name Edward, Edward Munch, Van Gogh, and Caravaggio, just because honorable mentions, two of them I think I relate to them in neuroses. 
like when I saw the word was like yes yes something something fell off the shelf in you sir I think how they lived their lives and how they used what they had and how that sort of became their lifestyle is more interesting at times but it creates a depth like a new depth of understanding of how they worked like their motive I don't know I think maybe it's the the inner ungraduated psychologist in me that's like let me analyze this let me learn these people people are just so interesting in their own ways you know I don't study them per se, I'm drawn to their humanity, and that really makes me appreciate their art. But I can say that before I knew about them, I was drawn to their work. Like Edward Munch, in my elementary school art classroom, the teacher had a reproduction of the screen. And before I knew he felt so existential, I felt it. When I look at Vincent Van Gogh, like the sunflower in the starry night, it makes me wonder whether or not I'm truly an expressionist or an impressionist. And I've wondered this before, and you're like, wow, this is not the time to have an identity crisis. And I'm like, you're absolutely right. But I have tattoos in homage of Van Gogh and Edvard Munch about flowers on my knees as I identify as a flower in disguise. It just seemed fitting. And flowers on the knees, like I'm kneeling in flowers. Stoic. They're probably a stoic sort of flowers because they're mazes. Anyway, if you take anything away from this video, it is art. Truly art. And art goes on. So I will in my next video.